Welcome back, history foodies. This month, we're going to experience the history and enjoy the food on the Bourbon Trail. September is known as National Bourbon Heritage Month, and what better way to celebrate than to share with you some history and some wonderful food at a couple of spots on the Bourbon Trail. Today, I'm headed into Bardstown, Kentucky, to the 2002 Best Bourbon Bar winner out of Nelson County, the Old Talbot Tavern. Operating since the late 1700s, this bar is actually the oldest bourbon bar in the world. I have very limited time to tell you so much about this location, but if you are interested in more, I really do recommend you download their app and keep digging for information. Also, this week, there's many different events happening at Old Talbot, so go ahead and stop by. Let them know that you saw it here on History 8 here. All right, so a little about Bardstown itself. Early in 1775, David Bard and his brother William come down the Ohio River, and then they settle in this area, essentially in a 126-lot town. Later, five settlers arrive, and then they go ahead and petition Patrick Henry, who's the governor of Virginia, for a license to form a village. They name it Salem. But later, they end up naming it Bard's Town, and then later it's actually officially put together as Bard's Town. A gentleman by the name of Andrew Hines purchases one of David Bard's lots, and in order to help attract other settlers, Heinz decides to build a permanent building, which ends up being this tavern. When the building was finished, it was originally known as Heinz Hotel. And this building is so beautiful. The Dry Stone Masonry Institute of America acknowledges Talbot Tavern as a uniquely well-crafted early Kentucky stone building and an extremely rare example of Flemish Bond stonework. The app continues to tell us that in 1792, there was a lot of growth happening in the area and a large number of settlers come into town and the Heinz Hotel was expanded. So you can see the outside brick wall and the addition that happens next to the staircase. Inside the tavern, on one side, you can see Flemish Bond exterior wall of the original tavern and the two brick walls that were part of the exterior additions. I love this picture that is up inside the main area as you come in to where the restaurant is. All right, let's talk about the world's oldest bourbon bar. There are approximately 200 different bourbons behind the bar. It's one of the largest selections that you'll find in the area. And two of the bourbons are connected to previous owners of Talbot Tavern. Tom Beam, brother of Jim Beam, created one of those best-selling brands that you see. And then 10 years later, he sold the tavern to Tom Moore, founder of the Moore Distillery, now known as Barton Distillery, and the maker of Very Old Barton. Like the sign says, restaurant through this door. So let's head up to the dining area. The original portion of the tavern has two original fireplaces where meals were cooked and served. This is the first dining room, and it is absolutely stunningly beautiful to sit in. I promise you the photos that I took and the ones that you may even see up on our Facebook page do absolutely no justice to the beauty of these rooms. There are so many old trinkets in here and antiques to enjoy from the time period, as well as just looking at the beauty of the floor below you with original wood, as well as the bar to the side and some great paintings that just show the beauty and elegance of the old tavern throughout time. I count myself incredibly lucky to be able to sit in here and have my meal this day and soak in the warm sun on a Thursday afternoon. I can promise you this room alone is well worth the trip to come and see the tavern. Now to the rear of that room is the Alexander Walters room. This serves as a second dining room. Alexander Walters was the originator of the NAACP. 
his mother worked for the Talbots, and in his own autobiography, he states that he was born in the kitchen floor of the pantry of the tavern. Across the walls in this room are old menus that the management has found and has posted. I'm floored by the price of some of these items on the menu. The third dining room is called the Audubon Room. The well-known artist James John Audubon frequently ate here. Two of his prints are still hanging in this room. And there's many other small pieces as well that you find here on these bookcases, as well as the beauty of the wallpaper, the fireplaces, and just the ambiance of the room itself is fantastic. Now, in order to be able to look at the dining rooms, you have to come during meal times. Otherwise, the rooms themselves are off limits to visitors. Now, if you decide to go ahead and book a room for the night, you'll head up the stairs to where the rooms are at. And there is plenty still to see up here as well. As you come up, there's a beautiful sitting area with another wonderful fireplace. And you might even notice that wall where there's a doorway that has now been sealed up. That's part of the expansion area. Tucked away in the Jesse James room area is a set of murals that our guest is going to tell us more about. So this room that we're standing in is pretty fascinating for a multitude of reasons, but during the French Revolution in 1790, King Louis stayed in this hotel as a guest of George Washington when he was exiled from France. And while he was here, he found our decorations, let's say, tacky. So he had murals painted on these walls, murals that he had covered up after he checked out. So these were actually uncovered much later. But the mural here to my right, this is going to be the Fountain of Versailles. As it looks right here, you can tell. Um, right over here, you've got Mount Vesuvius or Pompeii. This one in the middle is when Julius Caesar took Rome. And this one to the far right, in the top left corner, or top right corner, you will see the Great Arc de Triomphe. So these were under wallpaper for the longest time before they were actually discovered. But what's even more cool is that in the same room, Jesse James, the famous outlaw, is said to have uh, tried to sleep off a hangover and for whatever reason he woke up thought he saw birds flying around so he started shooting at them so all these bullet holes right here you've got six here and then we've got one in the wall of the fountain of versailles so all these bullet holes are from jesse james you know the history of this place is just incredible those beautiful murals themselves survived a very terrible moment in the tavern's history. Right around March 7th of 1998, an electrical fire started under the staircase to the second floor, and it really grew out of control pretty fast. Unfortunately, flames took over the building. All of the overnight guests were able to exit safely, but there was a heavy damage to the building. There were still a few photos around of the murals at the time, so I slid them in here so you could see what they looked like prior to the fire that happened. These were absolutely beautiful, and I can't imagine how devastated the family that owns the Talbot Tavern was when this happened. Headed in the other direction of the building are more rooms you could stay at, and this awesome set of photos of the 24 distilleries in the Bardstown area in 1896. If you continue down another hallway, there's many other overnight rooms. You'll be able to see a slideshow in the app showing you each room's interior, and these rooms are named for Anton Heinrich, Daniel Boone, and Washington Irving. I enjoy how the management decided to put up pictures and a little brief biography next to each one of these rooms. Anton Heinrich was a German concert violinist, and in 1817, he played his first music at the tavern. He went on to become known widely as a composer of American themes. Daniel Boone is a legendary American explorer and frontiersman. He frequently visited Bardstown. And Washington Irving, who is known as the founder of the short story format, also stayed here. In his short story, The Early Experiences of Ralph Ringwood, he fictionalized an event, a stolen kiss. And this occurred here at the Talbot Tavern. Check out the app for more information. 
there's another amazing room that made Kentucky history right here at the Old Talbot Tavern. I'll let our guest tell us more about it. So this room that we're standing in is called the Pleiades Room. Uh, it's based off of Greek tradition. But what's really cool about this one is that since this building's inception, governors and senators have met in this room. And a lot of laws that are enacted today were actually written in here. It's said that there's many ghosts that haunt this place, including one of the ghosts of Ann Talbot. Um, but the room is, when we're not using it for storage, is a wonderful place to have an experience of any type. Another famous guest that stayed here, Abraham Lincoln, the 16th president of the United States, stayed here when he was just about four or five years old, when the Lincoln family came through Bardstown for a trial over a piece of property. And just over from the Abraham Lincoln room is going to be the General's Quarters. Both General George Rogers Clark and General George Smith Patton stayed here. I find it slightly hilarious that General George Rogers Clark still has a bill. Maybe we can start a GoFundMe. Everywhere I turned, there was a piece of history waiting for me to find it here. I promise you that there's just not enough time to come through here unless you go ahead and get a room for the night. There's so much to see. The time has come, my friends. We've experienced the history. Now let's enjoy the food. I dropped by this day at lunchtime. Some of the same selections will show up on the dinner menu, and I still had them pick out some of the best ones that you're going to be able to get no matter what time you come. But check out these wonderful signature drinks as well as the bourbon flights that you can get. The alcohol menu is pretty wide and varied, so you can find just about anything that's going to wet your whistle, as they like to say. I went ahead and started off with an Abe's Bourbon Ball. You'll find Buffalo Trace Bourbon in here with some butterscotch schnapps and then finished out with a Buffalo Trace Cream. I grabbed my first appetizer. There you're going to see the fried green tomatoes. You guys, these things were gigantic. And again, if you've heard some of my other episodes, I'm going to grill places about their breading. I love to have a good crunch and I don't want anything that if it sits on the plate longer than 10 minutes, it's going to end up getting soggy on me. These things were amazing. That first crunch was really a great bite. And then of course you guys see that dressing that's on it with a little bit of the shavings there of cheese. And again, the breading, the breading, the breading, it's important, but look at that green tomato shine right through. Next up, I got some balls. Yeah, I got some barbecue bourbon balls. And they were the best balls that I think I've had with bourbon and barbecue sauce on them. And here I am showing you my balls. These were great. And I'm telling you, I had one after another, after another. I nearly didn't even take any home, but I did save some. Although I'm not a day over 21, I can tell you that this is the best chicken dish I have ever had in my life. This is the bourbon walnut chicken. This is a walnut encrusted chicken breast topped with a signature bourbon sauce. I took the time to take the fork to push it down through this crust so you could hear it. Now I know what you're thinking. Kayla, you're so young. How could you possibly know what an amazing chicken dish is? Well, you know when you know, folks. Inside, very tender, juicy. You can even see the heat escaping off of it. And that crust, I go back to breading, I go back to crusts. There is some kind of magic when you can do this right. This was beyond anything I've ever had. The crust, crunchy, the sweetness, the walnuts. I can taste the bourbon. I can pick up some sugary sweetness out of this. It was absolutely stellar. Oh, this meal made me fat, but it was glorious. I asked what the best dessert would be, and out came bourbon bread pudding. 
Oh my gosh, you guys, I love dessert. This stuff is amazing. Look at the heat coming off of that. Down into the bread pudding, that bourbon cream sitting in there gives it a nice sweet bourbon thickness to it as well. Just absolutely amazing. You have to get this one when you come in. With permission, I grabbed a couple of shots online to look at some other menu items in case what I had here just didn't hit the spot for you. Check out some of these other offerings between chicken fried steak, hot browns, vegetable plates, various sandwiches, and soups as well. You're gonna find something that you will enjoy here. Ugh, there I am, just dreaming about one day owning a tavern inside Kentucky. I hit up the gift shop on my way out. It's always great to support small business, and some of these things that you'll find are just great trinkets of memories of the place that you've been. I had a great time, Talbot Tavern, and I really do appreciate the selection that you have inside of your gift shop. If you can't find rooms at the tavern, just go next door to the Jailer's Inn. It too has a history of its own, but right there you're going to find another bed and breakfast to stay at and enjoy the night inside Bardstown. While you're staying at the tavern or the inn, you can take a walk out back and enjoy some quiet time with people that aren't going to bother you. Because why? There's a graveyard in the back, so go check it out. It's another one of those little cool things that happens to be right around. If you have a little morbid fascination with some older cemeteries, this one is really cool. Just over from the cemetery, a little bit behind that Jailer's Inn, is going to be a one-room schoolhouse. The John Fitch chapter of DAR moved this log school cabin and I snuck a little shot. I actually had to put my camera in the door because it was locked to grab a shot of the room itself. Hey everyone, where do you think I went after old Talbot's? Yes, I did. Heaven Hill Distilleries is actually a private American family owned and operated distillery that was founded in 1935 in Bardstown. Full disclosure, I was sent here on a mission to find a bottled in bond Heaven Hill bottle, but I couldn't find it and I honestly still couldn't find it throughout Kentucky everywhere I stopped, but I stopped here anyways and grabbed a couple of things. Get this, it is the seventh largest alcohol supplier in the United States and the second largest holder of bourbon whiskey inventory in the world. The largest independent, family owned and operated producer and marketer of distilled spirits in the United States and, and the only large family owned distillery company headquartered in Kentucky. As their website likes to say, since the company was founded in 1935, the Shapira family has been a steady hand at the helm through three generations and a multitude of changes in the industry. From the time the five founding brothers began the company shortly after Prohibition to its growth and diversification under second generation family members Max and Harry Shapira to its current position, Heaven Hill has always taken great pride in being family run. What a beautiful state to leave out from. To those at the Old Talbot Tavern, thank you for an amazing afternoon with you. Thanks for joining me again. Stay tuned here and go ahead and subscribe. We're also across other social media platforms. Check out Facebook, Instagram, and yes, I goof off sometimes on TikTok. From me and Nom Nom, happy eating.